Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sarah Bush, Director of Regenerative Medicine here at Athersis. I've been with the company a little over 10 years now, uh, but I actually started working with multi-stem cells uh, during my PhD. And at that time I was studying a phenomenon during which macrophages, which are an immune cell type, can aggressively attack neurons that are attempting to regrow. And I was watching these interactions under a microscope. And from the very first time that I added multi-stem to the system, I was amazed. Uh, not only did the immune cells stop attacking the neurons, they actually completely changed the way that the neurons themselves grew. I could immediately see the transformative power of the technology. And now over a decade later, uh, being able to hear from patients that are being treated with that same multi-stem technology is really the most motivating experience that I can imagine. Our research has shown that multi-stem cells can convey benefit in a number of ways, by reducing inflammatory damage, protecting at-risk tissue at the site of injury, and even by stimulating repair of the damaged tissue. And because the cells are multifunctional, we've investigated the ability of multi-stem to uh, provide benefit in many forms of injury and disease, from the neurological to cardiovascular to inflammatory and immune disease areas. Athersis has been incredibly fortunate to collaborate with leading investigators across the globe to advance a number of these promising preclinical programs. We have dedicated many of our resources to the neurological disease space, exploring the use of multi-stem for treatment of stroke, traumatic brain injury, neonatal hypoxic ischemic injury, spinal cord injury, and multiple sclerosis, truly just to name a few. Our initial focus in the neurological area involved evaluating multi-stem administration to treat ischemic stroke, and we are now in phase three clinical development. Athersis has always shown a commitment to safety, and now this is solidified in our non-clinical package, which incorporates all the studies that have been performed over the years to demonstrate safety, lack of immunogenicity, lack of toxicity, and tumorigenicity. One of the most exciting observations for me as a scientist has been the consistency with which we have seen reduction in inflammatory biomarkers and specific immune cell types. Uh, following administration of multi-stem cell therapy across both the preclinical and now the clinical space. We've been working very closely with Dr. Yarek Aronofsky at UT Health as his laboratory investigates the potential for multi-stem to exert benefit in preclinical models of intracerebral hemorrhage. My name is Yarek Aronofsky. I'm a professor and Huffington Chair of Neurology at University of Texas Health Science Center McGovern School of Medicine. UD has one of the largest and historically most promising stroke uh, programs in the world and prominence in both basic science and clinical research. Personally, my own research interest focuses on pathology of intracerebral hemorrhage for at least past two decades. In 2017, American Heart Association awarded me with the most prestigious award, Thomas Willis Lecture, for the outstanding contribution to the field of basic science in stroke for the research on ICH, it means intracerebral hemorrhage in my case. Why intracerebral hemorrhage? Uh, it is a very devastating disease, very uh, general problem. In most uh, cases, it generates a mortality in the range of 30 to 67 percent. And actually, most of the outcomes are very poor, and prognosis in the recovery is also very poor. Intracerebral hemorrhage is a global problem and represents about 10 to 15 percent of all the strokes in the United States. It is even a larger problem in Japan, where intracerebral hemorrhage represents about 25% of all the strokes. If you go to some region in China, it can represent approximately 40, 50% of it, uh, all stroke. So as you can see, it is a massive problem, international problem. It, it is, occurs as a consequence of the hypertension very often, uh, and it can be generated in the results of rupture of cerebrovascular malformation. It can happen following uh, and with amyloid angiopathy, the pathology that is very similar uh, to uh, Alzheimer's disease. It can happen following the trauma and very often happens in patients that are uh, anticoagulated. In contrast to the stroke, there are no 
approved effective therapy for intracerebral hemorrhage. So basically what we are trying to do is actually a pave a new uh, life. It means discover something that would work and help patient with intracerebral hemorrhage. Based on ongoing uh, basic and clinical study with MAPSI, and uh, as you all know, it is being studied in stroke and traumatic brain injury. It became an obvious that it could be a, a, an interesting uh, approach to treat intracerebral hemorrhage. About two years ago, in collaboration with actresses and specifically Dr. Mace, we have performed numerous uh, experiments using MAPC as potential therapy for ICH, using two uh, valid and translationally relevant uh, inches of our hemorrhage model. Using these models, we generated a really very exciting results. First of all, uh, we find out, find out that those cells are actually beneficial in general sense. Uh, normally after each severe hemorrhage, animals are losing weight and animals treated with those uh, cells actually gained weight and or remain at the stable weight. So uh, those cells actually improve uh, general status quo of animals after each severe hemorrhage. What was the most exciting part is that we have also generated really very positive results with neurological deficits. So intracerebral hemorrhage causes, causes neurological deficit can be measured in animal by variety of tests. We use this test and we find out that uh, cells could actually reduce a deficit by 50% or even more. So they are actually the animals had a half of the impairment that not treated animals. We then look in the brain and we find out that the amount of atrophy, the, the, that tissue in the brain is actually being uh, less in animals treated with MAPC as compared to animals uh, that were not treated. We have uh, basically determined that the higher dose of cells is good. I mean, 10 million cells was very protective. We have also found that two and 24 hours post-treatment were effective. And with 24 hours, it is a super time. The time window for, uh, for the uh, therapeutic uh, approach for uh, any treatment of ICH, 24 hours is highly clinically relevant and can be used in every single environment. We have also found that in a model that is called collagenase model that actually pretends the bleeding in the brain, those cells were capable of decreasing the bleeding it means that they could be very useful when applied very early on after intracerebral hemorrhage. In general, I mean, we are very excited with this. And why we are? We found a robust benefit, both histologically and neurologically, possibly, possibly the more uh, robust uh, agents that we have ever tested in our lab. Potential be benefit uh, regarding stopping further bleeding could be very promising. I mean, there is no uh, agent that at least I know of that has basically a capacity in order to improve recovery as well as the limit bleeding. It is easy to deliver. There is uh, no side effect basically on, on, on what we have found out. If validated in patient, this would be the first potential treatment for intracerebral hemorrhage. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI, is another area in the acute neurological space where we have been fortunate to collaborate with leading experts in the field, including Dr. Chuck Cox at UT Health. In preclinical studies, administration of multistem dramatically reduced the extent of damage that occurred after a TBI, promoted accelerated healing of the blood-brain barrier, and improved cognitive outcomes. With grant funding from the NIH, we advanced our multistem program for the treatment of TBI and further developed our manufacturing capabilities, which is fed into our clinical work in the trauma space. In collaboration with Dr. Jerry Silver at Case Western Reserve University, we investigated the efficacy of multistem treatment after spinal cord injury. Multistem prevented the loss of spinal cord tissue, resulting in significant improvement of walking function as well as urinary control. And as we saw in several other models of acute neurological injury, multistem cells acted in several ways to rebalance the immune system, reducing activation and migration of peripheral immune cells to the site of injury. In collaboration with Dr. Robert Miller at George Washington University, we've investigated the potential for multistem treatment to activate reparative processes as well in the treatment of chronic progressive multiple sclerosis or MS. 
MS is a disease of the central nervous system in which infiltration of immune cells leads to demyelination and axonal loss, disrupting the flow of information between the brain and the body. Using several preclinical models of MS, we've observed that multi-stem cell administration both slows the demyelination process and supports remyelination of affected axons, and this results in sustained behavioral improvements. When we investigated the mechanism of action underlying the enhanced remyelination, we found that multi-stem cell secreted factors actually increase the generation of cells known as oligodendrocytes, which are the myelin producing cells within the CNS. Uh, these cells provide support and insulation to the axons. Taken together, these findings demonstrate the potential benefits of multi-stem therapy for treating MS. We have also collaborated with leading researchers in the renal area, including Dr. Emily Thompson, who has investigated the potential benefit of multi-stem to improve health of kidneys prior to transplantation. This work generated a lot of interest and she was awarded the prestigious 2019 European Society of Organ Transplantations Leonardo da Vinci Transplant Research Innovation Award. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Thompson, a kidney transplant surgeon working at Newcastle University. My research centered around the central problem that faces transplant surgeons. How do we get more kidneys available for transplant to meet the needs of the patients on the waiting list? There are lots of donors that we feel where their kidneys aren't quite high enough quality for transplantation. And this is about 20% of kidneys in the UK and a much higher figure in the US. So how can we turn these untransplantable kidneys into transplantable kidneys? Recently, a technique was developed where we can now better preserve an organ between the donor and the recipient by keeping it alive outside the body and pumping it with warm oxygenated blood. And I wanted to investigate what would happen if we tried to add in a cell therapy during that preservation. And so I turned to MAPCs because they have a strong ability to counteract that ischemic and inflammatory damage that we see prior to transplantation. So to do this, I took pairs of human kidneys that had been turned down for transplantation, gave one kidney the cells and one kidney had no cells and was my control. And it was brilliant. What we showed was that the kidney which received the MAPSEs treatment actually became transplantable, whereas the control kidney didn't. The MAPC treated kidney made more urine and it had better blood flow throughout the kidney and there was less inflammatory and ischemic damage. And this work has really changed our thinking because it now means that we are able to pre-treat an organ prior to transplantation rather than treating the whole patient but afterwards with immunosuppression. And it opens up a really exciting new avenue of research to explore this pre-treating organs prior to transplantation. And it's really important for all patients on waiting lists, whether it's liver, heart, lung, or kidney, because that same perfusion technology is available for all those organs. And really, I think that the MAPC technology is a match made in heaven between this organ preservation and their ability to react and respond to that inflammatory and ischemic environment and provide those organs what they need prior to transplantation. And I'm really excited to see where this work continues. Also in the inflammatory and immune space, we are pursuing a multi-stem and regulatory T-cell co-culture platform in collaboration with doctors James Redding, Giovanna Lombardi, and Tim Tree at King's College London. Regulatory T-cells, also known as Tregs, are a specialized subpopulation of T-cells that act to suppress the immune response and are known to play a role in prevention of autoimmune diseases, transplant rejection, and graft-versus-host disease. Recent clinical experience has demonstrated that adoptive regulatory T-cell therapy is a safe and feasible strategy to restore immune system balance in these individuals. However, clinical trials have been a challenge due to an inability to manufacture a sufficient regulatory T-cell dose. We have known for many years that multi-stem is capable of promoting regulatory T-cell differentiation, which led us to ask if they could be repurposed to enhance ex vivo expansion of regulatory T-cells for adoptive cellular therapy. We have now developed a regulatory T-cell expansion platform in which regulatory T-cells grown in culture with multi-stem, which we call multi-reg, exhibit nearly a 16-fold increase in yield, reducing the time to achieve a target dose by an average of 30%. Multireg exhibits stable regulatory T-cell lineage and equivalent biological activity, and they're more readily expanded from patients with autoimmune disease as compared to matched regulatory T-cell lines. 
These data support the use of multi-stem in co-culture to rescue expansion failure and reduce the time required to manufacture a stable and effective regulatory T-cell product. As you can see, we have made substantial progress in the preclinical space, and we look forward to continuing to advance these efforts. Thank you.